Hey, what's going on, everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans, and you're watching Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. And today we're joined by Matt Patrick. Thanks for having me on, Sean. It's actually been one of my dreams to be on Hot Ones. In fact, we might actually be in one of my dreams right now. Confirm or deny on that. Well, considering the fact that my head is a JPEG and my chicken wings are floating in midair, I'm gonna go with dream. What a ride. But seriously, Sean Evans, when are you gonna have me on Hot Ones in real life? I'd make a great guest. I'm open, engaging, enlightening, entertaining. Hey. <laughs> Now you're gonna make me blush. But most importantly, Sean Evans, my audience has helped me to develop the perfect antidote to spicy wings. <laughs> I'm serious. All right, Matt. What? You don't believe me? Look at you, Matt Hatch, making it to the finish line. Finish line? We haven't even started. I... Hey, hey, where are you taking me? L put me down. Curse you, Sean Evans. I will be invited onto your show one day. I will. You haven't heard the last of Matt Pat. Cheers. <laughs> Internet, welcome to Food Theory, where today things are about to get spicy again. So about a year ago, we did an episode dedicated to spicy food solutions, basically testing out all of those things that you can eat to counteract the effects of spicy food in your mouth. And all of it was framed after my attempts to try and get on hot ones, which still has not happened. Yeah, so. that was not successful, which means only one thing. We, we gotta got do, do it again. again! Here's a quick recap of how our previous Spicy Wings episode went down. We discussed how capsaicin, the spicy molecule in peppers, binds to trip V1 pain receptors located on your tongue. So, in order to soothe spicy pain, we need to keep the capsaicin from binding to trip V1 receptors. And Steph and I found a handful of ways to do that. First, acidic substances like lemon juice did a nice job of neutralizing the capsaicin. We also found that dairy products, which contain a protein called casein, are also able to dissolve capsaicin. Capsaicin. And peanut butter, which contains a lot of oil, dissolved the capsaicin in much the same way. Sugary drinks worked pretty well by overpowering the taste of the hot sauce. And finally, we determined the more viscous and cold substance is, the better. Taking everything we learned from our various tests, we concocted our own spice solutions. A chilled lime simple syrup, which was acidic, sweet, viscous, and cold, as well as a peanut butter honey mixture, which was oily, sweet, and viscous. But we were definitely curious to know if there were even better options out there. And fortunately, Unfortunately, you loyal theorists have been flooding us with suggestions and home remedies for the past year over on YouTube, Twitter, Reddit. So this episode is all about you guys. Steph and I are going to try out some of your most requested items, as well as the ones that just jumped out to us as being pretty darn interesting. Hopefully, you you didn't send in a bunch of trolley suggestions, because because I could see them doing that. I could be I could see them being like, hey, yeah. can you test out this one? Ha ha ha. You know what makes hot pepper go away? adding more hot pepper. <laughs> so today we're gonna test a handful of different spice chasers against the Wingstop Atomic Sauce, which has a pretty decent amount of heat to it, but isn't anything outrageous. Once we've determined what the best spice chaser of the bunch is in the qualifying rounds, we're gonna pit it against Hot Ones' own last dab sauce in the final round. We'll also compare this episode's winner against our previous two winners from the last episode, the Lime Simple Syrup and the Honey Peanut Butter. Because we're trying to stay up on our Hot Ones lore, We've also updated our Hot Ones sauce. This one is the Last Dab Apollo Edition, which is their 2021 flavor, I believe. Now, the Scoville rating for the Last Dab Apollo hasn't been announced yet, but it's expected to come in at over 2.5 million Scoville heat units, or SHUs. For reference, a jalapeno pepper has got roughly 8,000. That's bad news for Steph because, uh, well, let's just say that spice is not her thing. Oh, oh my God, it's so hot. It's not leaving. It's so hot still. Oh, <laughs> God, it's worse. It I hate breathing. Yeah, hashtag relatable there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, last year's episode was not great for Steph. If I had a Spice Girls name, it would be like Wimpy Spice. So this one is dedicated to you guys at home and also to Sean Evans. Still waiting for that email inviting me onto Hot Ones. He doesn't invite YouTubers anymore. Oh, shots fired. That's the spiciest I'm gonna get today. <laughs> It, no, it's not. You're gonna get a lot spicier. I do know that Hot Ones tweeted out who do you want to see in the next season of, of the show. And a lot of you loyal theorists were spamming the comments being like, hey, at MattPatGT, at MattPatGT. You guys are the best. Good on you, keep doing that. So anyway, with apologies to Hot Ones, we're not really stealing your format at all. We're just showing you what great contestants we would be. He would be. Please don't call me. <laughs> 
And last thing that's worth noting, if you don't see your spice solution in today's episode, keep sending them in, because who knows, we can make this a yearly thing. Nope. We can make this a yearly thing. No. Let's do spicy food! <laughs> Round number one. Ice cubes? Now, we tested water last time. Water doesn't dissolve capsaicin, and in the end, it didn't help soothe spice pain all that much. But what ice has gone for it is extreme coldness, which is probably gonna feel great as temporary relief. A number of you suggested this one as your go-to home remedy, so Steph and I were optimistic as we bit into our first hot wing. It is definitely hotter last time. Oh, the second bite really started to bloom. Okay, I have a good little furnace going. Mm, okay. Oh, there's an immediate cooling sensation. Man, oh man, I cooled my mouth. That's cool. We should have thought about smaller ice cubes, Matt. No, that's great. I love this. By the time it's all melted, like literally melted in your mouth, the spice may have already dissipated. I'm getting some breakthrough heat in the back of my tongue. Uh-huh. I get that. Yeah. Where I don't want the ice cube to... <laughs> <laughs> I almost choked. I tried to get back there. I figured you did. Nope. Nope. I reached for the sun. <laughs> Come on, Icarus. <laughs> Icarus, calm down. Why am I already sweating? This is round one. So true story, Stephanie for years has been trying to get me to not chew ice cubes. So I, as a regular ice cube chewer, am familiar with the choking hazards of ice cubes. It's Stephanie, very so bad for your teeth. You shouldn't chew ice cubes. Or maybe it's made my teeth stronger. I don't, nope, that's really not the way it works. Maybe I'm building up my muscles in my teeth. Oh my God. So honestly, to me, I am shocked by how well this is working. I expected this to perform on par with water, which was not a great performer last year. But here, that extreme cold of ice is actually numbing anything that it's touching. So to me, I gotta say, this got me through the hardest parts of the spice. And so I gotta, I say, gotta say, this is like a B plus, A minus tier. I would actually have to agree. The only other thing that I would recommend you do, well, paint on your lipstick. Oh yeah. Cause, I might, cause my lips right now They're are also hot. feeling it mm -hmm. pretty badly. Mm -hmm. And so if I just, just do a little, here, here's my makeup tutorial. Ready, Matt? Here you go. Mmm. Sup fam, today we're doing our ice cube makeup. We should start a makeup channel. There it is, makeup theory. Guys. So a ton of you suggested spice chasers like sugar milk, milkshakes, ice cream, basically things that checked the dairy, sweetness, viscosity, and coldness checkboxes. Milkshakes feel like they make a good representative for this entire group. So today we're gonna try that with a shake from a local North Carolina chain called Good Berries, which is technically made with frozen custard as opposed to ice cream. The slight difference between the two is that frozen custard contains a bit more egg yolk. My gut says that shakes are gonna be a slam dunk as a spice chaser. And guess what? If it's not a slam dunk, it doesn't matter because it's gonna taste delicious because I love milkshakes. North Carolina, by the way, bam! Mind-blowingly good with milkshakes. Very good. Didn't realize it until I lived down here. Great. Mm. Cookout, infinite number of milkshakes. Good berry, boom. Very milkshakes. solid choice. Brewsters, you're all right. Yeah, it's decent. PDQ? Oh, PDQ, PDQ is great. All right, let's do this let's one. Let's do it. Here we go. First the bite. Oh, I'm glistening. Oh, I'm glistening. Hey, go for it. Oh, okay. Oh. Hmm. Oh, that's nice. Yeah? Yeah. All right. It comes back after like, mm, like six or seven seconds. This is getting to the back of my throat in a way that the ice cube Exactly, could, that's the thing. It actually, nice. it coats all the way back. It coats your throat. I feel like it's a little bit easier to push it also toward the front of your mouth. And it's also cold. And it's got better taste than just you know, frozen water. This is really good. Yeah, I would I've, say this is t solid A. Like Steph said, if you want to make your unhealthy meal of fried chicken wings even more unhealthy, chase it down with a nice tall glass of milkshake. <laughs> your waistline will thank you. <laughs> It will. Round three, mouthwash. Yeah, this one was a bit of a surprise. Got a fair number of suggestions for both mouthwash as well as mint. This one seems like it could be a winner because A, there's the overpowering flavor which should distract you from the spice pain. Two, you get to spit out the mouthwash along with any lingering capsaicin. And three, mouthwash contains a bit of alcohol which is supposed to dissolve capsaicin at the chemical level. At least in theory. In scientific theory. Because last time when we tested vodka as a spice chaser, 
it did not go well. From a chemistry perspective, I thought it was soluble. What happened? There's so much saliva in my mouth that I want to spit it out. Science has lied to me, and I don't know why. This is because alcohol also is able to trigger those trip V1 pain receptors. So rather than soothing the spice pain by dissolving the capsaicin, it actually compounds the pain by opening up more of those receptors. Now, they say insanity is doing the same thing repeatedly and expecting different results, but since mouthwash's taste and alcohol content are vastly different from vodka, we're gonna give it a shot. So we're gonna take a bite, we're going to swish with the mouthwash, and then we have our very own spittoon. Oh, what, what flavor did we get? We got Cool a... mint. It's definitely oh, cool, cool mint. Oh, cool mint. I was gonna say, see? I'm a cool mint guy myself. Are you? Yeah. I'm not, I'm not a refreshing mint guy. I'm a cool mint. Here, bite with me, Steph. I just want our spittoon nearby. Ready? Boom! No, oh, it's really building. Oh, God. <laughs> Was it round number three where Stephanie really started to lose it last time, too? Oh, that made it worse. Anyway, this is great. It's really tasty. Feeling the heat. Oh. It's definitely in the back of my throat. This is not going to help. No, not at all. <sighs> Maybe it will. Make sure you gargle. Oh, my God. It's so bad. Oh, wow. <sighs> That sucks. That sucks. That sucks. It's terrible. Here's milkshake. Have a milkshake. Oh, it sucks. It's really bad. Here, milkshake. Milkshake. I'm crying. I'm crying. I don't even know what to do with this one. Don't do that on camera. <laughs> do, it, do it that way. <laughs> no, because. Oh. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> this is the worst. Even I'm crying about this one. Oh so, my god, that was so bad. So oh. let me tell you, friends. Uh, mouthwash, not great. Basically, F, negative F. What is wrong with you? There was like this two seconds of like, oh, maybe this is gonna help, and then immediately you felt it like erupt ten times more, and then you spit it out, and then without anything in your mouth, you were just left with pain. <laughs> it was, <laughs> not great. I'm still feeling it. I'm still feeling it all over my, I, I like want to dunk my face in this milkshake right now. And with that, theorists, I believe we're going to officially label alcohol-related spice chasers as a theorist-certified terrible idea. Alcohol. Oh my god. Alcohol and things with alcohol keep coming up as like a recommendation for us to test. And I'm wondering if the rationale that people have is because of beer. And beer, while alcoholic, is actually utilizing another tactic here, which is that weedy, hopsy, things that, similar to bread, help to dampen the spice. So I'm wondering if people are conflating, hey, beer helps with this, so it must be the alcohol, with, hey, it's actually the hops, wheat, whatever, mixed into the beer that's actually doing the job. We have to move on to another round. Yes. I, and I cannot look at that spittoon anymore. Oh, this is disgusting, <laughs> by the way. Little did I know that we were only getting started. The contents of that spittoon were about to get way more horrifying real quick. Ladies and gentlemen, the hits just keep on coming because we're following up mouthwash with soap. You heard that right. Soap. I gotta admit, as unpleasant as this one might seem on the surface, soap at least seems promising from a chemical standpoint. Capsaicin is a thick, greasy substance, so the idea here is that if soap can cut through grease on your dishes, it should be able to do the same thing for your tongue. The question, I think, becomes, is it better to have really spicy food in your mouth or soap? Which is like the classic punishment for kids that like mouth off in, in the old barbaric days. Why we have toothbrushes here is because we need to kind of get the soap around our mouth, get it a little bit sudsy so it can start washing away the capsaicin. Uh, and so we're gonna do a little, little toothbrush, a little brush. Make sure you go in circle stuff. It has a picture of a duckling on it. It's not gonna kill us, right? This is not... Why would, the, why would you assume a duckling is going to kill us? No, no, I mean, like, it's gentle enough for this duckling. This is not going to kill us, well, right? You're, we're going to spit it out. We're not yeah. going to eat it. Yeah, don't eat soap. Just, it's not, <laughs> don't, don't do that. <laughs> Disclaimer, don't, don't eat, eat soap. soap. You would think that that isn't something that needs to be said in a video, but, you know, this is also the platform where the Tide Pod Challenge existed. All right, ready, go. Here we go. Let's Dang. do it again. I Remember? used to like this channel so much. <laughs> Mm. Maybe. Oh yeah. Look at that. Okay. I've got a good. I've got a good heat. Got going. a good spice going. Uh huh. All right. Let's do it. Okay. 
Where do you typically start in your mouth when you're brushing? Uh, over, over left hand corner. I, uh, I start lower left. Really? Uh-huh. Oh, lower right Uh-huh. Okay. The problem is that the spice is on my tongue, and I don't want to brush my tongue with soap. <laughs> I know. See, that's the problem there. <laughs> oh, this is gross. <laughs> it's so... What are we doing? What are we doing with ourselves? Oh, this is gross! It's terrible. Ugh. As soon as you're forced to confront the taste, it sucks. Oh, okay. <coughs> oh, God. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so here's the thing. I actually think that was a very effective antidote. It's just the worst antidote. It's really gross. It gives your mouth a really disgusting feel inside. Your spit is all soapy and you get a lot of spit. I didn't want the soap touching any of the parts of my mouth that were spicy. Honestly, the back of my throat, still super hot. My tongue, still relatively hot because guess what? I didn't want to consume soap. Is it a better spice chaser than mouthwash? By leaps and bounds. Is it an edible food product that I'm looking to bring with me on wing night so I can show the world that look at me, I'm eating spicy wing? No, it's soap. That's stupid. This is stupid. This gets a stupid out of 10. Come on. Theoretically though, it works. Round number five, oil. And when I pulled this out, Stephanie's mood went from bad to worse, and I'm not exactly sure why. What's up? I was actually dared to drink oil at one point when I was like, you know, 11 or 12 or really? something like that, thinking that it couldn't be that bad. Right, yeah. I, I actually deal. think that this may be the worst round for me. <laughs> no! I at, the idea of no! drinking oil is so bad. Well, we're not drinking it. We're just, we'll spit it out. I know, but it's... Ugh. Spicy wing! You might want to wipe. Matthew is really angry when people don't tell me he has food on his face during food theory episodes. Not angry, just disappointed. <laughs> like you would think that someone, someone, someone behind the camera would tell you, hey, your mouth looks like a clown mouth with how much sauce is around your lips. Is it hot? It's hot. Swish. Not helping. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Oh, my mouth tastes slightly more Italian, but other than that, I, there's no difference. Oh, did that help you? No. <laughs> no, not at all. <sighs> not at all. Which I'm, I don't understand why. Uh, Excuse me for interrupting myself, but I went and looked this up after the fact. Turns out the problem here is that oil doesn't mix with saliva. So the oil hits certain spots on your tongue, but not others. Which means it only dissolves the capsaicin attached to certain trip v one receptors, but not all the trip v one receptors. In short, using oil to soothe spice pain is about as effective as using a whole riddled umbrella to stay dry. So on, on the grading scale stuff, where do you put it? Uh, like C, D. It was really not effective at all. Round six, we're in the home stretch. Thank the flying spaghetti monster. Uh, my face is sweaty. My makeup has run. My nose is dripping. It, this is this is now at the point in this experiment that I had forgotten about from last time. It was so, where I'm so miserable that I just want to go lay on the floor. It was sounding like a second there that you were winding up into some Eminem <sighs> lyrics. My face is sweaty. My makeup's running. My nose is strippy. And I look stunning. Okay, so this round we're testing mayonnaise, no joke, as I was eating a spicy chicken sandwich from Wendy's. And as I was chewing that sandwich, I thought to myself, you know, there is a lot of mayo on the sandwich and it isn't that spicy, so maybe there's something to this. This was really, this is a, that was a really hot bite that time. Mm. I think it's also the collective yeah, it's rounds. And we haven't had a good solution in a couple rounds. This one's working okay. I'm okay, <laughs> I'm okay with this. I am okay with this right now. So as I was saying before I was rudely interrupted. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I wish I were like raking these reactions up. <laughs> this right? is so bad. Yeah, we're, we're not we're not overemphasizing any of this. My is... mouth is slightly less spicy, but I may throw up. <laughs> <laughs> you have broken Stephanie. Meanwhile, me. You know what? This has just reminded me how much I enjoy mayonnaise. Mayonnaise is delicious. Uh, on this category, I'd say it's a C. 
It's it, like sea level. It does actually get rid of some of the spice, but if you're not a mayonnaise person, oh my God, I wanna go home. You are home. I know. And finally, we get to, thankfully, a good one, which is the mango lassi. The lassi is a yogurt-based cold drink famous as being the go-to spice reliever in northern India. Now, there are a bunch of variations on the lassi, and a ton of different countries and cultures have their own take on it. Steph and I, for instance, once had a lassi in Turkey that was salty instead of sweet. Definitely not the best tasting drink I ever had. Rarely am I seeking out a cold beverage with the flavor of licking the bottom of a popcorn barrel, but because the hospitality was so nice and we didn't want to be rude, we managed to suck down like a good three quarters of it. Anyway, today we're trying to lassi that's sweet, because remember that checklist from earlier? Well, the mango lassi has it all, at least on paper. Honestly, is tapping into all of the things that you would expect as a solution here. Mango, slightly acidic, so that's taking care of our acidity. Yogurt, you got the dairy, so you have the casein that should be helping us take care of the capsaicin. You have the sugar. sugar, which makes things taste better and just helps kind of coat all the flavors. And then lastly, it's cold. Yep. So really, this should be the winner of the day, I would think. Thank it has you. everything that the milkshake had, plus the acidity from the mango, so. I'm excited about this one. Finally, finally one that I'm not dreading more than the actual chicken wing. Fingers crossed, let's stink it. Let's do it. Ready, boom. Okay. All right, feeling the heat? Are you good? Oh yeah, I got a good spice. Okay. Oh, oh boy. The cooling of the yogurt is nice. The fact that it's cool, the sugar are all definitely helping, but it's not a long-term effect, really. Yeah. I, I think the best so far for me is still the milkshake. Had the mango lassi had more viscosity, like the milkshake did, then it might have taken the top spot today, but it just wasn't thick enough to have a lasting effect. Also, the acidity of a mango is pretty weak, only a pH of about 6, whereas the pH of lemon juice and lime juice are around 2. Having tried a few different acidic options at this point, I'm going to go ahead and say that in order for an acid to soothe spice pain, it's gonna need to be a stronger acid than just mango. I would rate this at a B, but you know, coming off of the rounds that we just had, <sighs> grading this guy God on level. a curve. Yeah, this, oh. is, this is S tier when oh. it comes to grading on a curve. Jeez. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the grand finale, the challenge to end all challenges. We take our winner from this round of testing, which was far and away the milkshake. Milkshake, thumbs Almost up. uncontested. It's great. And we compare it and mix it with our winners from last time. So the lime simple syrup, as well as the honey peanut butter mixture that I, Stephanie concocted. I stand by this one. And just like last time, we're testing it with the granddaddy of hot sauces, the last dab. And each year, for those of you who don't know, uh, First We Feast, the, the creators of Hot Ones, they actually do a new hot sauce to combine with their season. And so this year's is Apollo. The heat profile of the Apollo pepper is akin to having your head slowly lit aflame. You feel the fire, consume your skull, your tongue smolders, burning tears pour from your eyes. And then five minutes later, the ride is over. Your heart rate returns to normal. The panic subsides. This pepper is like no other. Your heart rate? Your heart rate your subsides. I'm opening it live on camera right now. I think now. I have a heart condition. I need to sit this out. Don't worry, Stephanie. The honey, the honey peanut butter is gonna save you. So here we go. Brand new open. There it is. Ah! Mm. <laughs> mm. It is. It is a chunky sauce. Here, I'm gonna. I'm gonna just try real quick. Just a. I did this last time too, just so we could get a sense of what the flavor of this thing tastes like alone. It tastes like fire. What do you mean? Oh. The, the flavor. It tastes like charcoal and fire. Are you okay? <laughs> so, last. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. That was such a tiny bit that you had. It's a weird flavor, man. Uh, it is sharp kind of metallic-y, immediately has lit up my entire throat. It is hot, and it builds. And that, like you said, that was a very small, oh. Here, let's do the last dab, shall we, everyone? <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna dab, oh my god, it's building. Here, let's let's get it done so I can start okay, putting ready, things in my ready, mouth. Okay, ready, 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 go, go. Here we go, here, we go. dab, 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 Damn dab. <laughs> Strap in, ladies and gentlemen, this is a hot one. It's the name of the show. It's accurate. Oh. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Oh, no, there it is. <laughs> okay. 
<coughs> yeah. Here, so I'm gonna start with the milkshake. Okay. 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 Oh God, it's just charcoal. Oh, come on! It it's just like ashes in the mouth. Great. Milkshake's come great. Milkshake's great. Hundred percent milkshake. It got right to the back of my throat. It hit mm. where it was hottest and where I was most desperate in need of help. Oh. Front of my tongue suffering right now, uh, though. It's in my gums. <laughs> Why is there so much on my gums? Okay. We'll, go, we'll go for the we'll go for the peanut butter next. I I wish the peanut butter were cold right now. Uh huh. No, oh, that's the problem. Yep, it's not cold enough. It's not cold enough. It is helping. The sweetness is helping. It's distracting, but it's not cutting all the way through. Lime well, simple syrup, not great. I help. Milkshake. Milkshake is the winner. There you go. Mm. Wait, if it were hot like this for like 15 seconds, yeah. you'd be okay. But I'm on like we're on like minute two or three, and it's getting worse. I'm, are you I'm getting? All hot. Are you kind of getting? I'm, all I'm hot sweating up here and, I'm chilled down and here. I have some chills on the rest of my body. Oh yeah. Which is a very unpleasant sensation. It's like I'm about to throw up kind of, but not really without, like my gut doesn't feel like it's about to throw up, but it's that like sweaty feeling mm. that you, and like weird temperature differential that your body gets. Please let it stop. Okay. Why won't it stop? <laughs> it won't stop, Steph. I know, I know it's really It bad. won't stop. It's really bad. <sighs> Okay, so at this point we've done two episodes and tried well over a dozen spice chasers. And I think we can put together a cumulative tier list of what we know so far. Milkshakes are alone on the S tier. Granted, today we used shakes from Good Berries, which include a bit more egg yolk than your typical milkshake, so that's definitely something we'll try out next time. But man, when you are standing there facing down the gates of heck, that last dab Apollo sauce, then whoo, drinking that milkshake was the only thing that gave even a modicum of relief. In A tier, I'm gonna put our peanut butter and honey mixture. Honestly, it worked really well. The only thing holding it back was, like we said, the temperature. If it was cold and gave the same sort of immediate relief that a milkshake provides, it would have a shot at taking the top spot, but I'm not sure if cooling it down's an option. The viscosity of room temperature peanut butter and honey is perfect, and cooling down peanut butter to the degree that it needs is just gonna make it hard and more difficult to work around your mouth. I don't know, it's one of those things that again, maybe next time we can dial in more precisely. Now, based on its performance today, I'm gonna have to knock lime simple syrup down to B tier. I think the super hot Apollo sauce exposed it as a pretender today. Joining it in B tier are sugar water, ice cubes, and lemon juice. In C tier, we've got some spice chasers that worked decently well. The mango lassi, whole milk, diet coke, which gotta be honest, I only tested out because it was on the table. But hey, the sugar and carbonation is actually a combination that's worked out pretty darn well. Mayonnaise, which gotta say was surprisingly divisive, sits alone in D tier. E tier is home to the chasers that basically did nothing to help the paint at all. Water, olive oil, soap, bread. And as for the chasers that actively made the spice pain worse, there's a special place and heck for them. And that place is F tier. Vodka, mouthwash, good riddance, the two of you deserve each other. So there you have it, friends. Please keep sending us your suggestions for spice remedies. If hot ones can come out with a sauce that's this much hotter each and every season, well, we need to be arming ourselves with better and better antidotes like yesterday. Although I gotta say, I think we gathered some really useful intel here today. If Sean Evans does indeed invite me onto the hot ones set anytime soon, I am bringing the ultimate spice weaponry, a peanut butter milkshake. But hey, Hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit. Thanks for watching, everyone. Steph and I just suffered through one of the hottest hot sauces known to mankind. So can you give us a subscribe in return? Or if you're already a loyal theorist and subscribed, go harass Sean Evans on Twitter. Uh, you know, not harass, harass him, but gently and respectfully poke him a couple times that I absolutely positively need to be on Hot Ones yesterday. The longer he goes without inviting me on, the more of these hot sauce food theory episodes we're gonna have to do. And if next year's hot sauce is even hotter than Apollo, I don't know how many more years Steph and I can make it. And, and by make it, I mean live, because this one was rough. By the way, if you haven't watched our initial hot sauce episode from last year, do yourself a favor and go watch Steph having the single worst day of her life. Honestly, I can't tell which one was worse for her, this one or that one. Oh, poor Steph, she's a champ.